We have successfully created and configured a MongoDB replica set in our last video. So let's talk about, in this video, how to create an admin user and use that admin user to further create uh, MongoDB users for your application. And since uh, you need to create uh, MongoDB users, uh, and that's, uh, uh, so you, and that kind of operation, you have to run the related commands against the MongoDB replica set primary member. So what we need to do first is to find out which MongoDB instance that is running inside uh, on our Docker Swarm cluster is actually the primary member of the Docker Swarm uh, of the MongoDB uh, replica set. So now we are on the manager, Docker Swarm manager node. Let's run Docker PS to find out what the container ID uh, of the MongoDB service. And let's further run the bash command uh, on, the, on this container so we can connect uh, to the MongoDB service using the Mongo uh, command. And once we log in here, uh, you can see uh, that this Mongo service is actually a secondary member of the MongoDB replica set. To, to list, to show the status of the MongoDB replica set, you run rs.status command, and if you screw up, uh, you can see we have all these members, and the member with ID2 is the actual primary member inside the replica set. And this, this Mongo service's name is Mongo2, and we know that this Mongo2 is running on the worker number one node of the Docker Swarm. So let's log out from here, and what we need to do now is to switch the environment context to the worker number two machine uh, of the Docker Swarm. Should be worker one. All right, now let's list the container ID uh, of the uh, uh, that runs the MongoDB service on this Docker Swarm node, uh, worker number one. And uh, let's run the same command here against this container, being bash, and let's uh, connect to the MongoDB service. And this time we are running inside the MongoDB service that is the primary uh, member of the replica set. So this is where you can actually add users and run all these commands against the uh, MongoDB service. So in order to create an admin user, let's switch the DB to admin. And now we have switched to the admin database and uh, to create a user, we use db.create, create user, and give it a parameter of the detailed user information. And we do that by specify the username as admin. And let's create the password as well. So the password key is PWD, and let's give it a simple password here like A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three, four, five. And in your production environment, you, you need to specify a pretty complex uh, password just for security. And also, an important thing is since we are creating an admin user, we need to give it uh, the role of root. So you can specify multiple rules, uh, but for the admin user, we only need to specif uh, specify one rule. Uh, that is root, and the, D the DB is admin. So let's run this command, and the result is successful that we have created a username admin and this user's role is root over the db admin. And 
now let's create a actual uh, application user for in, inside the MongoDB service. So let's do this by adding another user. So we are basically running the same command, but specifying different user names. So say our user this time is just foo, and the password we are using uh, is this time let's specify it as one two three four five uh, and a b c d e and uh, so for for the application user you have to specify uh, the minimal kind of rules that you want this user to have and that usually would be a read write rule over one database. So let's specify it as rule read and write and the DB is my app DB. So for different apps you better just create different users. Alright, now we have a user named foo and its rule is it has the permission to write a uh, read and write to this database. And now let's log out from the Docker container and now we have an admin user and we also have an application user. But we also need to enable the Docker, uh, the MongoDB to uh, to to have authentication uh, for these things to work because otherwise uh, this uh, the MongoDB service doesn't really require password. All the things you have created won't work. So in the next video, let's create the credentials. Uh, let's actually enable the MongoDB to run uh, with. Uh, authentication enabled.